going into year two, it's, it's hard to even quantify how much different it really is. I think there's so much that goes into year one from a logistical standpoint, from an understanding of what you're trying to get done and accomplish standpoint. Um, it really is like truly trying to build the foundation. And now you can go in and you can really do a lot of the detail work and you can make it clean up a lot of things. You can look at what you didn't really like about what you did last year and fix it and improve it. And you can take everything that you did last year and really take it to another level. And so I think we are, uh, as an organization, top to bottom, just at a much higher level right now. Go out there tonight, you bring fire, you bring passion, you bring energy, you bring physicality. Thirty to thirteen is the final score, and who knew when Mike Elko wheeled into Durham that in his first season, Dave, a year later, he'd be walking off the field a champion in a bowl game, taking the Military Bowl title, thirty to thirteen. Congratulations to Mike Elko. Congratulations to the 2022 Duke Blue Devil football team, Military Bowl champions, nine wins on the season and it's just the beginning. Every season kind of has its own individual plan and we talk about that a lot around here but um, you know obviously the, the bowl happens and you win that game and you kind of put that to bed and you kind of look at a lot of different things. You look at your personnel coming back, you look at how it matches to the schedule, you look at some of the things that you did well last year, you look at some of the things that you can improve on and you try to formulate a plan moving forward, you know, and I think some of the emphasis points on defense, we've got to get a little bit better in the past game. You know, we know that's something that we've emphasized a lot. Uh, our ability to not give up the deep ball is something that's, that's going to be a huge priority for us this year. Uh, on offense, we're going to try to do a much better job of scoring touchdowns in the red zone area, uh, do a little bit better job converting on third downs. I think those are some of the specifics, but, you know, really you just try to formulate the plan for your program moving forward. Having a lot of guys back is huge. And honestly, you can go either one of two ways. Either you have a group that's come back, uh, had some success last year, and they get lazy and become complacent and don't really work as hard. Or two, the other end of the spectrum where it's like, all right, it's a clean slate. We already know what to do. And now it's a competitive edge in the sense that we know what we have to do to accomplish the work, and then we can do a little bit more. Honestly, I think on our team, it's the uh, second option I stated. Like, we have guys who came back with something to prove, right? Something to prove, a lot of games to win. Um, like we said, a big time schedule this year. Um, a lot of guys on the team who played a lot of ball. So it's pretty cool coming in. I'm excited to see where it goes. Everything is about our next move. What are we doing next? Okay. How are we going to attack today's practice? How are we going to attack today's individual? All right. That's what it's about. Okay. Yesterday's gone. All right. You don't know about tomorrow. Right. What can we do right now to prepare ourselves for the next step? All right. That's all it's about. Fix your mind on it. All right. Go attack it. Here we go. Cam, you got us. All right. Let's have a day, boys. We know what we need to do. TMB on two. One, two. TMB. It's tricky. It's a tricky dilemma. Coming into this year, there are a lot of people that have high expectations for us. But just like last year when we didn't listen to them, I don't think it's you know, right for us to listen to them now. I think all that stuff can mess with your head. Um, so I think it's best for us to just stay in the greenhouse, something Coach John talks a lot about, just remaining consistent um, and steady throughout the process, no matter what anybody has to say about us. You know, every year is its own individual cycle, and I think this team has, had, has done a really good job up to this point, but, it, but really had to embrace it last January of, you, know, you can't skip steps in the process. You know, you can't think just because I started last year, just because we won last year, that I can skip from January to September. Um, there's a lot that goes into building the core of a successful football season, uh, and all of that work started months ago, you know, and, and now fall camp is just kind of the culmination of that. Experience is uh, probably the, the greatest teacher and being able to have so many guys who have played like a lot of downs um, come back and then be able to um, coach each other. You know, I think that's another thing that we've really worked on this offseason too, um, is just being a, a more player-led team. And I think being able to have like vet guys that have done it before, um, know like exactly what it takes and then being able to, to show the young guys the way is, is what Duke football is all about. 
Duke All Access is brought to you by Gatorade. Greatness isn't about what you've done, it's about what you do next. By Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. And by Coke Zero Sugar. They say Coke Zero is irresistibly tasty. Does that make it the best Coke ever? Find out for yourself. I need to try it first. Yeah. You can feel confident Continental is the smart choice in tires. Can they handle extremes? Yep. Tested from the Texas desert to near the Arctic Circle. Really? Really. Anything for the guy who finds that one pothole? Yeah. Road hazard coverage has your back. For real? Absolutely. Were they made by, like, a bajillion engineers? Well, closer to 100. Continental. Welcome to the smart choice in tires. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments due to falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. And just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Statistically, the world is losing color. But who wants a gray world when we could have this? Honey yellow. Peri pinkle. Indy gold. Things stay the same when the same is where you stay. But in hundreds of Delta destinations, simply opening your eyes can open your world. I need to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We coming hard. We coming fast. Get out the way or get caught up in the blast. We coming hard. We coming fast. Get out the way or get caught up in the blast. When I took this job, okay, when I took this job, I'm right before it, on my interview, Coach Elko said, Feely, I don't want a bunch of sprinters. I want boxers. I want to be a physical operation. That's the God's honest truth. You bring that underdog boxer mentality and we are going to physically make people submit. I said this to a lot of people when I got here, you know, that is the most important hire that a new head coach can make is the guy that's running that room because so much gets established down there. Uh, your culture, your discipline, your accountability, uh, and that's before you even get into strength development and, and conditioning and agility and all of those things. And so, um, yeah, I mean, he plays an enormous role. He's, he's as important as any coach is, as, is on this staff, and uh, I know he feels extremely valued with what we're asking him to do around here and build. He's the guy. He's uh, developed us into true warriors and given us just that warrior mentality. He has a quote that he says, and it's written on, the uh, whiteboard in the weight room that's been there from day one is that the road to Easy Street goes through the sewer, and that's just something that we embody. There's not many things that you'll go through that'll be harder than a Coach Feely workout. So, um, you know, everything that, that we go through uh, puts us in a position to be strong, to fight through uh, tough challenges, and um, that's just his, his goal for us is to understand that no matter who we play, they haven't been through what we've been through. All our workouts we call the sewer because it's hard, it's, it's hot, it's steamy. And that's just the, the mindset that we go to anytime we get out on the field and it gets tough on a hot day in August. Uh, you know, we've been through the sewer before and uh, everybody's been through it. Everybody does the same work and we all push each other. So he does a good job of putting us in the mind frame that, you know, as long as we work together and we stay together and push each other, then no task isn't gonna be too hard for us to accomplish. Under control. Set. Good arms, Chandler. Good, Chandler. Good arms. Has pick go. We have to care. We've got to be the ones to push each other because nobody else is going to do it for us. We have no shot to rely on anybody else but the guys that are busting their butts within our walls. You guys understand that? Yes, sir. But that's all we need. we got really great people here. You guys down with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Coach Philly is uh, monumental in our success, right? He is the base of our foundation. 
and the base of our foundation is him, his work, his wisdom, um, his morals, his mantras, and almost like the self-belief. I say like obviously outside of weights and just building muscle, the big thing he did for us was just instill confidence. And that was through weightlifting, that was through conditioning tests, that was through uh, morning agility, like whatever the task may be. He's always hard on us, like he never takes it easy or anything, but at the end of that, it's always instilling confidence. Like it's always a boost, like you can do it, you can do it. Don't quit, you can do it, you can do it. It's just a constant reminder in your head, the voice in your head, and even before games, after games, like it's always the same message. You're very consistent, and that's honestly the biggest thing for us is that confidence. There's two ways that you can look at the game of football and, and from a training standpoint, which I think is interesting. You know, some people look at it like track and field, and, and in track and field, there's a certain way you prepare to become the best ready-made team on game day. Um, then in my mind, what we play is a contact sport. And, and to me, the best model is boxing. And if you look at how boxers train and what goes into getting ready for a big fight, that to me is what football training is all about. And so there's a physicality element. There's, there's um, you know, what you have to put your body through to, to harden it, to be ready to play a 12 game physical ACC football season. Uh, and that's what we kind of try to prepare for best play of the year in my opinion was surging on the goal line against UCF. Everybody's pushing to gain those two yards that we needed. If we do that, we're going to be very hard to stop. But you have to be ruthless and you have to be relentless. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments due to falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. And just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade, rehydrate, replenish, refuel. People have trusted Reed's Jewelers with their life's moments since 1946. That's because we're family owned. We treat everyone who walks through our doors or visits our website as a part of our family. We have a beautiful selection of jewelry and watches for any occasion. We offer free shipping and returns as well as multiple payment options to make sure you find the perfect gift. See why people have trusted Reed's Jewelers to celebrate their life's moments for over 75 years. Duke's new century cries out for a university where the drive to discover is not hemmed by disciplinary logics. Where philosophers work side by side with physicians and physicists. Where nurses find inspiration in narrative theory. Where mechanical engineers team up with marine biologists or musicians. I believe Duke will continue to be that university together. Shotgun. Here's the snap. He's going to throw. Great protection. Steps up in the pocket. Underneath, it's caught. And into the end zone for the touchdown goes Jordan Moore. Here's the snap on third and goal. Has some time. Looking downfield to the end zone. It is caught. Jordan Moore, a toe tap for the touchdown. Leonard to throw. They bring pressure. Doesn't get there. Over the middle. It's caught. Dive. Touchdown. And it's Jordan Moore who stacks on another one. Such good work by Jordan Moore, new to the position. Four-man rush, Leonard steps up in the pocket, fires downfield. What a catch by Moore, stretching across the 45 to the 43-yard line. It was a little bit behind him, but the guy who was competing with Riley Leonard for the starting job in the offseason picked up his quarterback right there. Yeah, a fantastic athletic play. 
after the season, I definitely watched the film, evaluated how I felt like I played, and then I had a meeting with the coaches, and they told me how they felt like I played. And um, personally, I think I was just a very raw athlete out there um, doing my best. But now, with this whole summer training as a receiver, I feel like I'm more polished, uh, more detailed, and more confident. Yeah, it's funny, I was talking to Jordan, so when I started training camp this year, I was making some cut-ups, uh, just practice tempo and some different things, and so I was going back from last year, and I'm watching, you know, practice four, practice five, and Jordan Moore's still playing quarterback, and he still hasn't even made the switch yet to wide receiver, and so I think uh, what this year has done for him has is, is been fascinating. I think his body is in a much better place to handle the wear and tear of being an ACC wide receiver. I think he's been able to really work on his fundamentals and his craft and detail everything that he's trying to get accomplished and do. And uh, I think you're going to see a really, really good version of Jordan Moy as well. Leonard from the shotgun. Here's the snap. He rolls to the right. Plenty of time looking downfield. Lost it for more. He's got it at the 34. Steps inside at the 30. 20. 15 cuts right, and he dives down to the one yard line. It'll be first to go. I would probably say the first play of the Temple game. Um, it was just like a, a big relief. Like, I, I was a little bit nervous about switching positions. And then once that play happened, I was just like, I could breathe and. And then I, I can really get going. Here's a snap. Looks to the right. Taking a shot down the sideline for more. And he's got it. Touchdown. He did it again. An amazing play. It is absolutely jaw dropping. It rushes four. Leonard's got time. Going to take a shot downfield. Moore's wide open. He'll walk in for the touchdown. Riley Leonard dials it up. A 50-yard bomb, and the Blue Devils are right back in it. Jordan Moore making plays left and right. I would say probably after the pit game is where I felt started to feel more comfortable. Um, obviously, a lot of like things like this take a lot of time and work. I was working very hard, but like those reps are the reps and reps and reps, um, the repetition of everything, like added on to each other. I felt like toward the end of the season, I got more comfortable. Jordan runs great routes. Obviously, he's a you know, great target of mine. Somebody that's going to make a 50-50 play into a 70-30 play the majority of the time. So I love throwing it, to, throwing it out to him. He plays the game full speed. He's doing a great job protecting the ball, and uh, he really compliments my game. Learning how to get off the press, how to create separation on the top of routes and everything like that, getting out of my breaks in three steps or less, um, all that stuff is brand new to me. So I know I was a fast guy, but kind of Trying to harness everything and make it as detailed as possible is probably the most challenging thing. I think he's light years ahead of where he was a year ago. You know, if you remember last season before our first game, he had been there about 10 days or so before we played our first game. And he was constantly learning as the season was going on and it wore on him. I think it got hard on him because as the games got tougher, so did the, the, the defenses that he faced. And so now he's got an off season underneath him. Um, spring ball, all those things. He's just, he's bigger, he's stronger, faster, he's more confident, he's learning how to get off press, how to run routes. Just the, the, the technique part of that position, I think he's getting a lot better at it. His confidence has, has really gone through the roof. The main thing that we focused on was getting my body right. Uh, I gained about like 20 pounds this off season, uh, working on my upper body strength. Because as a quarterback, we didn't do any benching. Like we really did upper body. So getting my strength where it needed to be to play at, in the ACC as a receiver. And then I worked a lot with the receivers and my receiver coach, um, just like doing footwork drills and stuff like that. And watching film, see where I needed to improve and how I could improve. Honestly, everything can be different. You know, I think he really was trying to figure out so much of the base elementary level of playing wide receiver. Um, you know, where does a normal wide out line up? How do I get the weight on the right foot? Now we're able to kind of work on dry phase, how we work at the top of a route, how we can sell routes, how we can create separation. Um, there's just so much more that goes into playing wide receiver than just going out there and, and running a curl, right, as some people maybe talk about it. And so I think he just came in with a much stronger foundation this year and really trained for 10 months, 
um, to play wide receiver this year as opposed to last year where he trained for about three weeks uh, and then played a whole season. I feel a lot stronger, I feel a lot faster, more powerful out of my cuts and everything. Um, I feel like the day by day in the summer has been paying off in terms of where I want to be route running wise and playing receiver wise and then obviously the film study and being with all my other teammates watching film going over plays has really helped my football IQ. It's bow time. It's not just football season. It's tailgate season. And this season includes every kind of football. Crispy. Will you accept this leg? And everything that's not. Because it doesn't matter where you tailgate with crispy hand-breaded chicken and scratch-made biscuits. It's her! <gasps> you're not just tailgating. You're tailgating like a legend. It's bow time. <laughs> Head to Bojangles and grab your tailgate box today. Statistically, the world is losing color. But who wants a gray world when we could have this? Honey yellow. Perry pinkle. Indie gold. <laughs> Things stay the same when the same is where you stay. But in hundreds of Delta destinations, simply opening your eyes can open your world. You can feel confident Continental is the smart choice in tires. Can they handle extremes? Yep. Tested from the Texas desert to near the Arctic Circle. Really? Really. Anything for the guy who finds that one pothole? Yeah. Road hazard coverage has your back. For real? Absolutely. Were they made by, like, a bajillion engineers? Well, closer to 100. Continental. Welcome to the smart choice in tires. Duke Football 360 with Dave Harding, presented by Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. Duke Football was excellent at starting games last year. They were 6-1 when they scored on the first possession of the game, a perfect 7-0 when they were the first team to score. A good example of that was against UCF in the bowl game. You see the defense out on the field first. The Knights have the football. It's a third down situation. Screen play. They're trying to stay on the field. Look at the D-line, the effort to get back up the field when they realize it's a screen, swarm tackle, and bring the ball carrier down. Get the ball to your offense. Riley Leonard in the pocket, plenty of time, able to find his outlet in Jalen Calhoun. A third down conversion for a first down leads to another play, an opportunity for Jalen Coleman, your running back, to rumble 37 yards. Look at the effort. This is right out of the locker room. They just warmed up. This team comes ready to play. The blocking off the left side as we take a look at the end zone copy. Look at Coleman carry people down the field. This helps to set the tone, showing your opponent you've come ready to play. Then get in the red zone, hand it off to Jacquez Moore, the running back, one quick cut. Look at the great vision here. Off to his right side, good blocking, and he's got a touchdown. Before you know it, the Blue Devils leading the way, helping to set the tone early. That allows you to control the game right out of the gate. Football's so much a game of momentum, of energy. When you're a fan in the stands, you can feel it. When a team has a good play that starts to feed off of each other, you can build on that. As Duke starts another season, it'll be important for them to get off to a great start in each and every game. We saw how that resulted in wins a season ago. If you can be that team, sharp right out of the locker room, ready to prove that you mean business, stick to your game plan, you don't have to chase and claw back into a game, you come right out strong, that can make a huge difference in confidence for yourselves as a team, but also in proving to your opponent that you're ready to play. From under center, it's Leonard on second and goal, takes the snap, tosses to the right, Coleman stretches it into the end zone, standing up for the opening touchdown. How about that? 2.03 off the opening quarter clock, and they punch it in for six. 
exactly how you want to start under the Mike Elko era. We talk about game control all the time, and I think game control is, is really important. And, and I think people maybe sometimes incorrectly assume that uh, the way the game plays out is the same way it would always play out. I, I think getting ahead early, setting the tone for the game, getting control of the game, sometimes allows it, you to play it the way you want to play it. Um, whereas sometimes when you get behind, you start chasing the game and you look back at that game on Sunday and you don't play it anything like how you drew it up. And so um, getting off the fast starts, I just think allows you to control the game the way you want to. First and 15 off the 38, letter to throw, no problem. Down the middle, down Mullen. He'll get 15, he'll get it all. Touchdown. 38 yards in 15 seconds into the game. The Blue Devils are dancing in the end zone. It's Coleman straight ahead, huge hole inside the 10, the 5, into the end zone. Touchdown. Wow. Coleman right up the gut. And the Blue Devils strike first. He's going to keep it himself running right. 45, bounces outside. Here goes Leonard. 40. 30, down the right sideline, say goodbye, touchdown. And Riley Leonard is dancing in the end zone as the Blue Devils strike first. Blue Devils chewing up yardage in time. First and 10 off the 14, and we're under eight minutes to go in the opening quarter. Here's a handoff running right. Jacquez Moore inside the 10, he's gone. Touchdown, a 14-yard rumble. And Jacquez Moore has his fifth of the season. Oh, that's a great start for Duke. We talk about this a lot. The 2023 team has to formulate its own identity. And I think what we know internally is, is that our best is better than the best the 22 team could put out, right? And that's because of all the things you just said. We've got a more experienced team. We've got a lot of guys that have veteran reps. We have a lot of guys that are very comfortable with what ACC football is all about. But the challenge for this group is to make sure that they understand that they've got to formulate all that and, and they've got to find a way to push themselves to get their best out. And, and that's been the focus of the entire offseason. That's been the focus of training camp is to make sure that at the end of the day, the 2023 version of this team is the best version it can be.